here's a quick video on how I'm using LogSec personally and at work also. So I'll go over some key features that should be useful to just about everybody. And then some specific workflows that I use and a couple of advanced features that I'm just getting into. So the recommendation from the creators of LogSec is that you start by just creating or using the journal pages that get created for you automatically. So I created this empty graph yesterday, added this content, and today is the 17th. So there's also this page, which is empty for today, but I'm just going to focus on this page. And to start, the content is, you can, is Markdown. You can also use org mode syntax, but most of the time I'm just using plain Markdown. So headings, two hashes, three hashes, and uh, you can use tab and shift tab to indent and dedent as appropriate. And so LogSec is a bit different to say Obsidian because it is like an outliner rather than having paragraphs. This works for me. So is one of the many reasons why I use this over Obsidian. So going over some basic features, you have tasks. So here, something you just use day in, day out, creating tasks, marking them as done, and you can add them easily using the slash command, just type to do. All that's really doing is providing the text for you because you could just as well type to do in capitals and that's going to work. And there's your task and then you can mark it as done. Then as mentioned, you have these journal pages, which is where it's recommended that you start just by adding content every day, tasks, for example, and using the outliner. And then the next most powerful feature is links between pages. So if we, you can just go and create a page that's uh, square brackets, double, then you either search for a page or you create a page. So I have some, a handful of pages already. Let's say I want to link to this page for whatever reason, then that's all I need to do. And I can click to go back and forth between the two. And then backlinks, when you go into a page, then you can see all of the references to this page, which is how you connect ideas and allow relationships between pages to surface quite naturally. As you're researching one thing, you see that you've linked to it elsewhere. Could be a project, could be more concepts that you're relating. It's really up to you. And then you can get into linking things by date, especially if journals are the center of your workflow, then this will work very well. So I can have a to-do that I'm just going to link to this date, or I could have also just created the page by putting in a date in the future that doesn't exist yet. But this does mean that it's going to show up automatically because I have referenced it directly as part of the text. I'll just delete that for now. And you have a couple of features which are from org mode where with the slash command, you can schedule it. So if I schedule it for tomorrow, then it's going to show up in a moment here. And I could complete that from there and it's all of course linked and stays up to date. And then another concept is you can do something similar, but this is a deadline, which has slightly different semantics to scheduled where it's going to put them together, but you have things that are due today as in to be finished and other things which might just be due to be started. So then we come to the concept of blocks where a really great design decision in LogSec, I think, is that the block is the indivisible unit of content rather than the page when you're linking. So all of these entries, everywhere you see a bullet, that is a block. 
And so where this can be particularly useful is where you link to blocks or you embed them. So let's say that I didn't finish going through the advanced features and I want to refer to that for tomorrow, then I might have a reference to it and say just that. I want to have a link to advanced features so that when I click on it, I've got this hover that shows me the content, but I can also click on it and I'm going to go there. And I know that it's part of this day, but I can also go back where I came. But then another thing you can do, which I think is very useful with the tasks is that you would embed the block instead. So if we embed advanced features, then it's actually going to show up in full, although we can't collapse it. And then if I have actually completed these, then on this day, I'm following my to-do list and I can check them off. And so this can be a very useful way of taking tasks into the future where you haven't finished them before. There are other ways to do it but I have found this to be useful because this is just one line and you can copy paste this to any number of days as you move them forward through time and eventually get them done. And the other thing that the block references are very useful for is say if this was a page about a certain topic and you have headings, you've written a number of headings and then at the top of the document, what I'll sometimes do is collect together the main, a bit like a table of contents, but particular headings that if I was to come back to this topic and review it, then I would want to click through those and um, be able to preview them. Then the block references are very useful there. And it means you don't need to create very fine grained pages. You can just create a page, have a number of blocks and the headings will then become those linkable units. So in terms of actual workflows, I use LogSec to structure pages about particular topics or in particular systems. If there's something I need to learn about, then I will just create a page about it. Earlier, I created some pages, but if, let's say I'm learning about tool A, we'll call it. I can go in there and create headings about, let's say it's some kind of database system, then you know, querying and say something about group by queries. And I put in things like, I could put in some code if I've encountered an issue or something unusual or just whatever I'm learning. Then here you can, um, and just another feature, you can actually just put in code in different languages and get reasonable syntax highlighting. So making something up here, but just to show then you get a uh, nice bit of code highlighting and you can also put in uh, LaTeX if uh, you're working on some mathematical content. And I found that structuring pages this way about tools and projects, languages, whatever I'm learning as part of my work helps me to deal with the complexity of it, especially the fact that I can link to things very freely and navigate freely. And so I find it a great way to just dump in notes and then come back to it and review and explore the structure very easily. Then this concept of Zettelkasten where you have interlinked pages, cards, blocks, whatever. And the fact that they are interlinked means that you surface connections in your thoughts or content, whatever it is that's in your graph, that this will then emerge when you are, say, writing an article and you can gather together a number of related points and there you have what you're going to write about. So there's lots of content out there about this concept, taking better notes, for example. But in terms of what I actually use LogSec for, I think one of the great things you can do with it is track things over time, whatever that might be. So for example, in my team, we have shout outs on a Friday and a lot can happen in a week. It's easy to 
forget small things, but if I am, I'm on the 16th of November and let's say there is something that somebody has done, which I th would like to remember on Friday and put in the shout out, then I can have a page for that person, you know, great job with PR. One, two, three, whatever it is. And what that's going to do is that on Friday, I can just look at the shout outs and I can see by date all the references to it. And this is not the only way to do it. You can also use a tag on something like, let's say that you know, the same person really helped with X, then you can also reference like that, like a kind of hashtag which is quite nice. So that will also then show up. And then it's really easy to grab these and put them into that post. And the same thing goes with, if you have performance reviews where you work, then you can record things over time that are you know, personal highlights for you. Just add on this kind of hashtag and they will if it's in a journal, then it's going to be collated by date for you automatically in a page for that. And also if you need to give peer feedback on this person, then not only can you write content in their page, but also you can see the linked references. And if you use the more advanced features like filtering, then you would be able to actually filter down to just shout outs or just whatever tagging system you have come up with for yourself. And so that can save a lot of time and also help to not miss things that uh, you might otherwise forget when you sit down six months later to write this feedback for somebody. Also, you can structure this any way you like. I quite like to plan the week. So you can just do this in quite a free form way, even you know the date format you use, but just, you know, let's say I go with this, then I can plan the week and I can reference particular days if I want, but otherwise I can easily just get to my plan for the week as I go through the days. And that's all about work really. In my personal life then, I use LockSec on my phone on iOS to collate notes on what I'm reading. So if I have a particular book like um, reading Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker, then I could create a page for it and I could just at the top make a reference to books and then I put all my notes down here. Then if I go back to books, then I'm going to have all of the pages that refer to it. And there are some nicer ways to do this with metadata and so on, but just when getting started, this is very simple. And this way can collate all of the books that I'm reading, the notes on it. And uh, personally, I like to do my reading on Kindle on a phone, do the notes on the phone, and then come back to it on desktop. An important point there is that this is you know on a Mac and on iOS. I would not recommend using the sync using iCloud is not reliable. And this is something that the LogSec developers can do very little about. It's more about the reliability of iCloud itself, iCloud Drive. So I would recommend using the new LogSec sync service, where if you become a backer at this point in time, then you get access to that. And that's been working very well. Some advanced features just to show, I don't use these extensively, but this is just what I'm getting into recently. For example, taking notes on YouTube videos. So let's say I've got a page about YouTube videos and I've got one on linear algebra. You can embed a video URL. So I'll just paste that in. It'll load. And then as you are watching it, then wherever you are in the video, further down below in the page, if you press Command-Shift-Y, 
then you will get a YouTube timestamp, which is in seconds. And then, you know, make your, make your notes. And then that turns into a link that also controls the video. And let's say the reason I was going to make a note on this one is that I know that there is a typo that maybe is going to throw me later in this video at six minutes 53. So a little bit clunky, I have to work out the seconds for that. But you know, if there's a typo should be, I need to actually check what that was again. So if I go here, close this, I can see I've actually jumped to that time, which is very handy. And then a quick demo of the fact that you can write LaTeX. And so I can say it was supposed to be X1 plus X2, Y1 plus Y2. And just show that this renders nicely. And this is not something I'm using extensively, but it is a very handy feature. And at the end of the day, it is just text. So I think it's uh, a good long-term format. Then something I'm just looking at now, there is this extensive querying capability within LogSec, which I only use one feature of, which is I'm adding tasks to days over time. And it can be a drag to move them to the current day. And so one way to get around this is to actually create a page dedicated to gathering some of these outstanding tasks. So I've created a page, outstanding tasks, and I just did a very simple query of to do. And so that gives me everything marked as to do. And there are other possibilities here, like it's possible to mark tasks as later. You have to do and done, and you have now and later as two options in the settings. If you go into the settings, you can choose that. It's up to you which one you prefer, but let's say that you did go with now and later, then you could create another section, which we could just do now as a demo. I'm considering switching to this. So if I say that this is going to be later, so I completed it, but then I uncompleted it and that's marked as later. It's not going to show up in my outstanding tasks view any more, although it shows up as a linked reference because uh, it links to it directly. But let's say I want to track what I've deferred, things that I maybe started doing but couldn't finish or I want to finish later, then adding a query is as simple as this. And so this is going to give me things that are marked as later only and to do is currently empty. And the syntax is actually extensive. You can do a lot with this. I'd recommend just looking at the documentation, but for now, this is enough for me to get value out of that. And there are some other features which I'm not using, but I would expect to use like templates and metadata, which work well together. If you include the metadata fields in the template, then say if you're doing your book notes and you want to have particular categorization and tracking of the status of whether you're actually finished the book or not, and whether you've published your book notes, for example, then that's going to work very well for that. And then flashcards with spaced repetition. This is pretty great. I've used this a little bit, but not extensively. When you click on this for the first time, it's going to show you exactly how you use it. And it's really just a case of tagging any block with card. And it's then going to become a flashcard that you can review and you can do closed deletion as well. So that wraps up how I'm currently using LogSec. There are many more, more advanced ways to use it, but just with these key features, you'll find that over the course of weeks and months, you'll build up a sizable graph that you may find that you'll struggle to 
live without. That's certainly my experience and hope you have a great experience with it too.